Welcome to another Autodesk water tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to automate your curve number calculations using info drainage. This tutorial is aimed for any civil engineer performing drainage analysis or anyone looking to simplify, streamline, or automate their curve number calculation workflow. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to start with a pipe network and catchments already built inside of Civil 3D, and then I'm going to quickly walk through the export into info drainage. From there, I'll demonstrate how to import land use and soil type data, explain the required inputs, and then show you how to automatically calculate composite curve numbers based on that imported data. All right, once we're inside of Civil 3D, I already have a pipe network and catchment set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and export this project and build out a new project in Info Drainage. If you would like a deeper dive into exporting and importing between Civil 3D and Info Drainage, check out the link in the top right corner of your screen or in the description below. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paste the file path where I wanna save my project. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna bring over a surface into Info Drainage from this Civil 3D project. And then I'm gonna set up the part mapping. This means I'm essentially matching the Civil 3D part sizes to their equivalents inside of Info Drainage. And then once that's done, I'm gonna open up the file inside of Info Drainage. All right, so now that this is open, you can see that these are the same exact catchments and pipe networks that I just had open inside of Civil 3D. If I go into one of these catchments, you can see that these are all gonna have the default values right now. Two things I'm gonna to wanna to change is I'm gonna to wanna to check this use land uses and soil types layer for the calculation of my curve numbers. I'm also gonna to wanna to change the runoff method to the SCS runoff method. And a quick trick, if you wanna globally change all of these at once, if you just select all of your catchments and then in the properties tab on the right hand side of my screen, you can globally change all of these since I have all of them selected. And now if I come into any of these catchments, you can see the parameters have changed. So first off, you always have the option to manually add soil types or land use polygons. However, this approach can be a bit inefficient and potentially inaccurate, especially if you have access to better soil or land use data from other sources. In this video, we'll be calculating curve numbers using the TR55 method. As shown in the screenshot, the process is fairly straightforward. For soils, all you need is the soil group classification, A, B, C, or D, and then you'll overlay this with the appropriate land use soil type. To help you get started, we've included links in the description to several publicly available resources where you can find soil group and land use data for your site. These websites make it easy to download the information you need to ensure your inputs are as accurate as possible. By far the most efficient way to import in a land use or soil group polygon is gonna be from a CAD layer or from a GIS layer. For this example, I'm gonna be doing it through a GIS layer. First of all, you can specify a particular shapefile or kind of pull a shapefile from a file geo database. But for this example, again, I'm gonna be using just a shapefile. Next, I select the soil data shapefile and then click next again. The system then prompts me to confirm that this is the correct file. So I click next again. And this brings us to the field mapping window. On the left side, you'll see all the required info drainage fields for GIS import. And on the right side, you'll see the fields from the shapefile you selected. You don't necessarily need to specify a name. It can be auto-generated. However, for, however, for soil data, the most important field to map is the soil rating. And then one, once that's set, I will click on import, which brings in all 31 soil polygons. You then can review each one individually if, you, if needed. So now I'm gonna repeat the same process for the land use data. Again, I open up this, I select the shape file containing the land use information. Once again, confirm it's the correct file and then click next. Just like before, the left side is gonna show the info drainage fields and the right side shows the fields from your shape file. For land use, you wanna map several key fields, um, condition, cover type, land use, percent impervious, and the volumetric runoff coefficient. And if you actually notice in the bottom left-hand corner of this window, you'll see an option to template these field mappings, which saves time um, by avoiding manual mapping each time. After clicking import, all the land use polygons are now brought in and you can click on each polygon to inspect its attributes. Finally, when you go into your subcatchments, you'll see that each one now includes a pervious curve number and a composite curve number. 
The composite curve number is calculated using the pervious curve number and the percent impervious value from the imported data. This composite curve number value is what info drainage is using in its analysis. As you toggle through the subcatchments, you'll see how the curve numbers vary based on the spatial analysis that was completed using the overlaid land use and soil group polygons. And that wraps up the video on how to calculate a composite curve number in info drainage using land use and soil type data.